Kif just had one of the best runs we've seen this year, running one of the cleanest offenses of Madden 23. He fought through LCQ where he beat several of the world's best players just to face Clef the God, Decroft, and Dez in the Madden Bowl. These are the six plays he used out of the Saints offensive playbook to get ahead. We'll also get some key takeaways that will instantly improve your game of Madden 23. In his first game of Madden Bowl, he faced Clef the God, who went to the final of the Thanksgiving MCS tournament, meaning he's no slouch. Kev got his offense going early as he went deep on just his second offensive play. He audibled from the gun bunch to the play, tight end in for setup number one. He put the square receiver on a C route and blocked the tight end. Right as he snapped the ball, he diagnosed cover two zone. This safety here gets sucked out by the C route and leaves the middle of the field wide open for an easy completion. This play set the tempo for the rest of the game. He was forced to take three on that drive though as Clef showed some strong red zone defense. On Clef's first possession, he threw it directly at Kiff's defender who dropped it. After that, Clef the guy was able to punch it in with a big run by Terrell Davis to take a 7-3 lead. That didn't face Kiff however as he moved down the field into scoring position. On third and goal, he called setup number two, the double slant. After coming out in bunch, Kiff audible to the tight offset formation into the play PA shot seams. He put both outside receivers on hitches and the inside wide receivers on slants. Just before hiking the ball, he motions over the running back. This throws Clef the God for a loop and allows for the slant to get open. They just suck in the zones and open up the slants. Clef could only cover one with his user, leaving the other one wide open for an easy read. What interesting though was how he caught the ball. As he threw the ball, Kiff made sure to click onto his receiver by pressing circle on PlayStation or B on Xbox and cutting the route off. Had he not done that, the safety Julius Peppers could have knocked it out and Kiff would be on a difficult fourth down. Clef got the ball to start the second half, but Kiff pounced on him, forcing a D-line pick six to go up by 10 points. Clef answered back though, forcing Kiff to go down the field again. On first and 10, we saw an audible to the stack wide flex play fade out. This caught Clef off guard, allowing for a big strike down the middle of the field for an easy score against the cover four match. This highlights the importance of switching formations to keep your opponents off balance and throwing different things at them so they don't know what hit them. Clef would not go out without a fight though, as he once again marched down the field and hit a crossing route for a nice touchdown. Clef only being down by three points, this was still anyone's game. Thanks to his high-powered offense, Kiff had Omaha, which made him even more impossible to stop. He iced the game on a crispy C route for this third power play. He ran the play trail with the solo wide receiver on the left. That is important because the C route on the left does a great job against man coverage, and it's just overall a very glitchy route to go to. After the snap, it was clear to Kiff that he had an easy touchdown to Michael Thomas in the back of the end zone. I don't know what happened to Clef's zone, but it was a good dot. This put the game away and set up a matchup between Kiv and Decroft. Kiv and Decroft have one of the greatest rivalries in the sport because of the games in the Seahawks Cup Championship. Decroft has won two of those three games, so Kiv had revenge on his mind. His defense started on fire, forcing a pick on Decroft's first drive. Kiv didn't waste any time after the interception, hitting the wheel out of the play wide curl for his fourth setup. He came out in bunch with the bunch to the short side of the field and put the tight end on a post route. After motion snapping circular across the field. The wheel was open right at the snap, allowing him to go for a 72-yard touchdown. Decroft then proceeded to tie the game on a nice tight end crossing route in Kiv's red zone. Before I get to mention, Kiv audibles almost every play. He does this as to not allow the defense to get set up and catch his opponent slipping. This next setup allows for great flexibility as it only focuses on one half of the formation. You audible from bunch to PS shot seams and put square on a corner route. Backside, you can do whatever you want. In this case, Kiv put a post on his tight end and circle on a corner route. The post and corners do a great job versus man coverage. The double corner combination is also a great flood-ish type of concept that works from both hash marks. This play destroys both man and zone, which is why I made a TikTok about it. Kiv was held to three points, which opened up the door for Decroft to win 81 yards in about 40 seconds. This put Kiv under pressure to get at least three points to close the gap going into the second half. This did not happen. Kiv ran the double post. Very similar to the double slant I showed earlier, you run it just the same way. After completing the pass, however, Kiv juked right into his stick, which forced the fumble. Kiv was visibly frustrated, but kept his cool and didn't give up any points off the turnover. Kiv then started off the second half with a bang by hitting the wheel route from PA shot seams, which beats man coverage. I showed that in one of my earlier videos, which is why you should subscribe to this channel to not miss content like this. On first goal, Kiv ran a formation he hadn't ran until this point in the game. The play was PA by receiver in out of the Y off to a weak formation. He noticed that Decroft was playing a lot of press man coverage in the red zone, which 
opens up the wheel route to Herman Moore. As soon as Kiff saw the press, he threw a high pass by holding L1 on PlayStation or LB on Xbox and scored a touchdown to go up by three points. With the score being 17-14 in Kiff's favor, Decroft went on another drive that got stopped in the red zone. Decroft decided against going for a touchdown and took his points giving Kiv the ball with a tied game. This is when Kiv employed the second tip you should take away from this video, play defense by playing offense. Kiv realized that he was struggling on defense, so he just played keep away play, methodically marching down the field and chewing away the entire fourth quarter. He kicked three, by the time Decroft got the ball back, there were only a few seconds left. Kiv intercepted the Hail Mary and had some stuff to say. He's making a run here in the Madden Bowl. Talk about give me I, I'm feeling a lot better hands so yeah. Motherfucker, let's go. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm not in love. That's what he said. They cut him off. He said, give me Kiv. Mm -hmm. You see what happened? Mm -hmm. We saw it. Talk we that saw talk. It? We saw it. Like it. That's what we need. Oh, and he got I like fumble. it. Can't fuck with me. Talk, man, talk, champ. After this huge win, he met Dez in the semifinal to go to the bowl. Dez is having the best start to a career we've ever seen, making the final four in three of his first four tournaments he's ever played in, and being the youngest belt winner in MCS history. This was shaping up to be a heavyweight battle. And things are going early. Dez got picked off on his very first play, but Kiff couldn't convert for a touchdown. Dez then found his footing, converting a C-Rod for a touchdown to go up 7-3. to three. After the laser, Dez got Kiff into a 4th and 10 where he was forced to show his amazing click-on skills to cut off a post before the safety could make a play. Just as I explained earlier, Kiff ended up driving but had to settle for 3 points again. This left Dez the perfect chance to extend his lead and leave Kiff with no time in the first half. That didn't happen though as Kiff lurked his solo way to get the ball back in Dez's territory. He got a 4th down and three at Dez's 11 yard line and he decided to go for it. This is where power play number six comes into play. He audibles from the bunch to the Trey offset to set up this red zone laser. He puts the tight end on the post, the circle wide receiver on a slant, flats the middle wide receiver off the trips, puts square on an in route, flats the running back. That was a lot, but this is how the play looks. Dez has some great coverage on the field and nothing is open. Just as the D-line starts to shed, Dez's user leaves the slant, which Kiv recognizes immediately. This play was a huge momentum shift for Kiv. The half was not over though, as Dez got nope. greedy on a third and long, and Kiv got a good return on an interception. With the ball at the 31-yard line, Kiv took a shot into the end zone, which ended up costing him dearly. To start the second half, Kiv just launched the ball for no reason right at Dez's defender which gave him a chance to take the lead. And that is exactly what he did after capping off a five minute drive that took the game into the fourth quarter. Dez scored seven points and was up by one. With the momentum on his side, he forced three incompletions and forced Kiv into a fourth and 10. Kiv went back to his double post setup and once again showed the importance of clicking on and cutting off routes. On second and 10, he called power play number seven out of the tight offset to end. To play his PA shot seams and all you do is put both outside wide receivers onto corner routes. This is a great chunk yardage play and got Kiv into Dez's territory. After that completion, he proceeded to run the ball to take some more time on the clock. On third and three, he audibled into the stack wire flex to call the play fade out. He put his running back on an option route to beat man coverage. As he snapped the ball, he saw his receiver getting a step and threw to the back receiver of the stack. As the ball was in the air, however, that receiver got nope. bumped, which threw him off his route and disrupted the timing, making the pass incomplete. With his tournament hopes on the line, Kiff decided to lay it all out there and go for glory. He went back to the tight offset, calling the play bench. Kiff put his running back on a streak and motioned him over to have the streak go right up the field. As the ball was snapped, Kiff diagnosed man coverage. The pressure from Des came in though, which forced Kiff to hit the corner earlier than he wanted, which allowed Des to get the breakup. After the turnover on downs, Des got a first down and drew the rest of the clock. Des went on to win against Henry, showing off his dominant dollar defense. This is where big lesson number three comes in. Do not beat yourself. Kiff put on an amazing performance and in my opinion, absolutely dominated this game. Had he not turned the ball over before halftime and right coming out of half and played these two last plays better, we might be looking at a different two-time champion in Kiff. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.